so short. I, I can't see anything but people's chests. I'm trying to get it out of this crowd so we can just get our bearings. Excuse me. Well, this is our new home. I think I'm going to be sick. What? Again? I told you to stop shoving that bread down my throat. Oh, for the love of Mary. Oh. Right, lad. Just go off the boat. Oh, ha, I. Oh, is she all right? She's pregnant. <laughs> yeah, I did notice. Yeah, suppose you want some jobs, eh? That would be a grand place to start, eh? Well, how about I do you a favour? I happen to own a sewing establishment. Ain't but a stone's throw from where we've stood, and I need some ladies to help out. Small hands, you see. They're better with a needle. A needle, you say? Was this about a needle? Oh, are you feeling better now, love? I was just chatting to your fellow here. How do you fancy a job? Sure. Molly, it, it's in a sweatshop. Oh, what? Uh, look, uh, how about I just give you the address? See, uh, first ring in the morning? Bright and early. Say, eight? I, I will do just that. Uh, thank you... Uh, Billy, miss. Billy Madison. Well, thank you, Billy. Aww. Oh, well, he seemed nice. You do know what just happened, right? Yes. I got the job. Sewing. You got a job. Sewing. Ah. Well. Maybe I'll, you know, learn. Oh, come on. At least it's a start, right? Money Street Inn? <laughs> so, where are we going? Oh, uh, first things first, we need to sort out some lodgings. And food. Oh, God, I'm hungry. What? But, 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 why are you looking at me like that? Uh, because you just threw up what food we just had left. I can't help it. Anyway... That lady on the boat said all that should stop soon. Plus, it was the bread we had. Because it's all we can afford. All right! Jesus, Cal, will you calm down? You're stressed, aren't you? Oh, can you blame me? I'm just trying to make everything all right for you, okay? Don't you be worrying about me. You're growing, my child. Where do we go for lodgings? Uh, Dorset Street's our best bet, apparently. Um, whereabouts is that? Uh, I don't know. I've never been to London, Molly. We should stop. We can't start having our first argument here. And you shouting at me like that is going to start one. Just calm down. At the end of the day, no matter what, we still have one another. <laughs> yes, and you too. I will never get used to those weak kicks. Oh, come on. Let's try this way. And as I said, all we have left for you here is penny sit-ups. Seriously? 
You said you just arrived. I've got regulars who use my beds daily and pay their way. But according to your man here, you have, well, next to nothing. Please. Look, go try Flower and Dean Street. Lodging there owned by the Smiths. Number 56, big white house. Can't miss it. They have arrangements. What sort of arrangements? Can't rightly say. Next! Don't get involved. What's the matter, love? You jealous, love? Oh, she's a fine one. <laughs> Bet you charge a ton. Look at her fancy frock. Bloody snob. Get inside, Molly. What's that smell? People. Lots of people. And it says to be a shock to your posh guard brain. What you want? Um, a, a room? This way. You just arrived. Uh, uh, yeah, we just travelled. Got jobs? Um, I have. Good. In here. Four pence a night. You can use this room in the kitchen. Four pence? That's ridiculous. Look, do you want it or not? people in here. Both men and women. Aren't they even divided up? I I'm not sure I'm too happy with Molly having to share a room with like ten men. Climate, you two are posh, aren't you? Full on hard times. Hey, look. I'm not posh. It's just... What if they, you know, take advantage? So she charges. Get more money in your pockets, then. What exactly are you insinuating? A whore, aren't you? Fourteen, knocked up, and no ring. You at least get good business here. That's a cheek! For one, I'm not fourteen, and... Room or not? We'll take the room. That'll be eight pence, then. Eight? You just said four. Four each. That makes eight. Hmm, should we be proud you can do basic maths, or...? But Molly, we can't afford eight. What other options do you have? Two penny hangover. Sleep on a rope. I am, I am God's name. Do you sleep on a rope? You don't have to worry about that. You're going to sleep in here. I'll try and figure out the rope thing. Cal, I don't want to be in here by myself. No, we can't afford for us both to sleep in this room. Not tonight anyway. And I'm not leaving you here with your massive bump trying to hang over the top of a rope. Plus, look... There's girls in here too. Maybe they're friendly. Well, they don't look it. They look smelly and... They will, they will steal anything I have. Oh, fucking hell, Carol. I'm spoiled, aren't I? Did you just say fucking hell? <laughs> oh, sweet lord. I've already gone native. <laughs> Go on, get yourself to bed. I'll see you after work tomorrow, eh? I love you. I love you too. Right, this way. I wouldn't take that one, love. It's Gertrude's. Gertrude? Big girl, in the corner. Oh, oh. Right, right, right. Yeah, you wouldn't want to mess with her. The one by the window's free. It gets wet when it rains, though. But you did show up late. We got lost. Uh, there's rat droppings in this. <laughs> Welcome to London. We all share residency with those biting buggers. Arrived today. Is it that obvious? <laughs> yeah, you have green written all over you. Green? Means new. Oh, <laughs> there I was thinking it was some sign for us we Irish folk. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Bet the lads like your quirkiness. How much you charge? Ch charge? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not a, a whore. 
Sorry, I didn't mean to offend. I'm Imogen, by the way. Molly. Nice to meet you. Sorry about the whole thing, it's just most of us here are. Easy money. Oh, well, I won't be doing any of that. <laughs> um, do you know everyone in here? Yeah, mainly regulars. Got Gertrude, spoken about her already. Then there's Phil and Terry. They work at the docks. Oh, maybe I'll try and talk to them about my cattle. Um, he worked up at the docks in Belfast. Only one way to get their attention. Sorry, Molly. Seriously? Does everything revolve around sex in here? Let me guess your story. You're what? 14? 16. A prod? A Catholic. Alright, so I'm not great at guessing people's backgrounds. That's why I like it here. No one cares. Then why are you even asking me all of this? Just making conversation. Sorry, I'll stop. No, 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 it's fine. It's just... I didn't really expect anyone to, you know, be nice here. Most people aren't, to be fair. But I keep me head low. Watching what goes on here. It's my entertainment. You really don't belong here, do you? Neither do you. We Irish lass with a two-storey home. Wait, how did you know... All right, lads, what's I miss? Oh, here we go. Who's that? Susan McMartin. Works over at the match factory in Bow. Thinks she's better than most people in here because she managed to whore herself out and still works in those factory walls. I brought potato cakes. Well, I say brought. Who wants one? Cost your mind. Oh, they look so good. Probably about 80% chalk. But if you're desperate... <sighs> baby kicking up a fuss. <laughs> oh, he's a hungry win. <laughs> you want him one, love? Oh, um, I don't have any money. Guess you're missing out then. Got to get those pennies, love, or you won't last. Hey, Susan, I'll have two. Please and thank you, Lady Imogen. Thought your upper-class ladies would have taught you manners. Just give me the cake, Susan. All right. That first night in the Doss house was an eye-opener. I lay there hearing the rats scurry around me. It had started raining outside, so one side of my cot was soaked, while the other was covered in rat shit. Oh, my stomach ached. I was so hungry. All my energy was taken. My body trying to grow the baby inside me. And I was so tired. But I dared not to sleep in case I missed the dawn. Then missed the knock for me to leave to work. I did my best not to cry. I had done that so much since leaving home. I can't believe I was even thinking about it. But I just wanted me mammy. I just wanted everything to go back to how they were. With her looking after me, I wasn't ready to be a mother. I laid in my damp bed and sobbed. But no one came to comfort me. They just left me there. Crying my heart out. Excuse me. I'm so sorry, sorry. P pardon me. Sorry, 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 sorry. <sighs> hmm. You're cutting it fine. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't get the best of sleep. Well, you here now. Come on. <laughs> you be based here, Millie. Uh, uh sir, uh, it's, it's Molly. <laughs> uh, it, it doesn't really matter. You're just another set of hands to work with this law. Corner. Right. All they're doing is putting the last bits of hats together. Yeah, nothing really complicated. You work here till 12. Then you get a five minutes for food and some tea. Then back to work till eight. Eat? But 
What about the light? What, have you ever heard of a candle? Well, go sit then. Now, see that leftover bit of material round the rim that needs trimming, then seaming so it doesn't run? Just a simple, just a simple stitch. Hmm. Um. Sorry. Uh. How? How do I start? From here? Or <laughs> ha! I thought you were gonna be a bright one. You're as thick as two short blanks. Mary, show Millie here how to sew. I'll be back at twelve. I expect you to have made at least twenty hats. But twenty? That's what I said. Now get to work. Oh, oh Lord. Oh, I'm so hungry. You're done. <laughs> um. Well, How many? A uh, twenty. No, I'm. I'm just done. Shit. This is utter shit. A toddler could sew better than this. The seams, new gal, the bloody seams. These are worthless. Do you know how much money you've wasted here? Oh, but, but I did exactly as I was told. Well, it's not good enough. You hear me? Sir, I, I can try again. T tomorrow I'll redo them. Forty. T tomorrow I'll do, I'll do forty. You ain't stopped all day. How do you expect to sew in the dark, girl, eh? I ain't able to shit candles out. <laughs> you work for me. I tell you what to do. You hear me? You would do it proper. <laughs> yes, sir. There are other ways to earn you, though. But this is the respectable way. And you don't want to go upsetting God again, do ya? I'm already in enough trouble. And I need this job. You best be working better then. Out! Out! <laughs> oh, get off the floor! Be back tomorrow and work better. <laughs> better! Yes, sir. I, I will, sir. I promise. Hello, you. It's late. Where you been? I've been working. Hang on. Molly, have you been hit? Fine. Don't suppose you saw Cahill at the DOS house, did you? No, sorry. I hope he's all right. Guess and I won't have a bed tonight then. Don't worry. Me neither. I was meant to be going to Lady Bracknell's home today, but she cancelled. So I'm back on the in and outers. The in and outers? Yeah. Matchbox making. Some of us get together to put all the little bits of wood together. I guess and that's what's in the baskets then. <laughs> that it is. Oh, let me give you a hand. Oh, thanks, Moles. Jesus. How many are there? Two thousand. Sweet Lord. Right. Where are we taking them? May as well join you as I haven't got a bed. Have you eaten today? You look a little... weak. <laughs> oh, the wind's taken all of me energy. You can walk with me to the factory, but I'm getting you a spud on the way. A potato? Oh, but, but I have no money. I have enough. Don't you worry. Other than this matchbox making. What makes you think I'm not just a regular tart? You could pay for us both to have potatoes without worrying about money. Yet you spend four pence every day to sleep in a coffin. <laughs> Promise you won't judge. <laughs> I'm a 16 year old soon to be mammy with no husband. <laughs> you will get no judgment from me. I'm. 
I'm a lady's companion. Um, can we, can we just stop for a minute? Sorry. Oh, this bump is getting so heavy for me. Of course. Um, what's a, what's a lady's companion? Basically, I keep upper-class women company when their man is away. Oh, oh that sounds nice. <laughs> no, Moles. I keep them company huh? in a sexual way. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Right. Hence the hiding. No one cares in the DOS house. When I have had a place to myself, I... I think too much. Never good to be alone with our own thoughts sometimes, is it? No. Well, I guess not. Here. What are you...? Lifting the bump. Taking the weight off you for a bit. You are way too small to be carrying this around. Bless you. Oh, that feels so nice. Oh, and he's kicking away. <laughs> Happy to carry on? Bo's not far now. Oh, I need to teach Carl this trick. Then, you just gently let go. Lady McCarthy taught me that. Used to love it. She had three inside her, though. Oh, oh don't even say things like that. <laughs> so, what are we going to do about sleeping the night? It's nice out. I know a place. It's dry and quiet. No one will bother us. Come on. Late, girls. Late. Sorry, Mr. B. It's not normally me who brings them. Edith didn't want to come today, for some reason. Didn't she now? Well, tell her she has to come tomorrow, or none of you will receive any more supplies, and I will cut you out of the in and outers delivery. Understood? Yes, sir. Leave them there. You, other girl, who are you? Is your name in the book? Uh, the book? Yes, book. You made these boxes with Miss Dean. No, Mr. B. She just helped deliver them. Hmm. What's your name? Uh, Molly O'Connor, sir. Molly. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Miss Dean. Please don't tell me it's much further. It's just up here. What? By that rickety wooden bridge? Under it. Don't worry. I'm not leading you into a trap or whatever elaborate story you have running round your head. <laughs> it's not all Dickens, you know. There are books of which the backs and the covers are by far the best parts. Hmm? It's from Oliver Twist. Charles Dickens. You're too intelligent for your own good sometimes, Molly. Who dares approach my bridge? Give over, Jack. This green's very pregnant. Last thing you want is to scare her and her to pop right here. Ah, oh, Imogen, you dirty whore. How you been? Don't be calling me that, Jack. Who's the green? Uh, I'm Molly, the very pregnant one. Ah, uh, and what brings you down? Weather's good. Plus, we both missed out on beds. Well, if you don't mind animals. Animals? Judging by the excitement in her voice, I'm guessing she don't. Well, come inside then. Uh, sorry about the smell. What is this place? This building is my home. And me, my dear, I am the Queen's official rat catcher, Jack Black. At your service. You need to stop telling people that, Jack. What? I have a uniform and everything. Just because you sold a mouse to the Queen as a pet one time don't make you any better than us. Oh, but they 
they are so sweet. What even is this creature? She is one of my ferrets. Call her Bessie. Oh, she knows her name. <laughs> of course she does. I send them out to find the rats. Want to pet her? <gasps> oh, please, can I? You good, Mouse? I'm all right. Are you all right, Bessie? I'm, I'm grand. How are you, Molly? <laughs> Never had anyone react to a fair like this before. <laughs> oh, she reminds me of the foxes we will get back home. You like animals, and yet you moved to London. <laughs> Cattle moved us to London. I had nothing to do with that decision. Cahal? Lad who knocked her up. Got her in this mess. Ah, Irish and not married. I get ya. Right, so, ladies, you're wanting a bed? Well, there's some straw in the corner. Prop yourself over there. Sorry it's not too comfy. I'm not too fussed. I'm just so bloody tired. And uh, keep a hold of the ferret. She likes a cuddle. Hey, what's that? Hello, you two. Oh, you have company, I see. Hey, you won't want to make a comment. Let a man have his fun. Get to bed. We won't keep it down. Sorry, girls. Jack likes to moan. <laughs> so, what has he brought Susan for the night? Best not to judge. Come on. Bring your new ferret friend. Let's get some shut eye. Please, for the love of God, tell me Cahill got me a bed. Of course he did. Where have you been? Sorry. I last night I was walking in the docks all day and night just hoping for some work. Well, you could have left me a note or something. I spent the night in a shed. Literally, a shed. Well, you can look after yourself. You're a big girl. If that's a comment about my witch, I will bite your ankles, you bastard. <laughs> look, I'm only teasing. I missed you. I missed you too. But it was only a day. Weren't you just a wee bit worried for me? Uh, always. <laughs> you know who I did manage to talk to, though? Who? A Catholic priest. And? What did he say? Well, he wants us to go to Mass. Obviously. Then he will meet you. He... Does he... You, you know... No. <laughs> oh, I. He knows. Hello, you. Hope you're being good for your mommy. Don't be doing that. You know how weird it makes me feel. You do it all the time. Yeah, but it's sort of, you know, connected to me. You bending down and talking to me belly. Oh, just don't, please. Sorry. You're beautiful, you know that. Oh, could you stop? I can't be talking like that. You know where that leads to, and I'm not finding some backstreet alley to go for a quick shag down. I'm hungry. I'm tired. <laughs> it, um, is that a bruise on your cheek? Don't worry. I worked a lot better today, and Billy never touched me. Is this because of your sewing skills? He hit you because of that? No, no Molly, no. No, not having that. I won't have you working there. It was going to be knocking you about. Oh, I'm getting money. How else are we going to pay for the beds after today? I need this job. For the both of us. You're pregnant. So? I'm able to sit in a chair and work. Is this because you haven't found employment on the docks yet? And you don't want me to be the only income? It's just, it's not how things are done. I think 
somebody's a little jealous. Um, I think someone better stop teasing me like that. Otherwise, I will pick her up and take her somewhere private and just have my way with her. <laughs> See, you better take her to some smelly alley so much better than me. <clears throat> you two quite finished. Shall I set off your places? Uh, no, we still want the beds. And you're definitely not together? Not tonight, no. <laughs> Come on, Miss O'Connor. I will assist you to your room. Well, thank you, kind sir. <laughs> <laughs> I had been working at the sweatshop for a week. My sewing wasn't perfect, but it passed most of the time. Every day was the same. I went to work. Cahill stood on the docks, hoping for something. Anything to get some money in. But nothing came. He was never picked for the odd jobs scattered about, and it started getting to him. He started feeling low. He hated that we were having to live off my own wage. Sunday came, and we smartened ourselves up the best we could and headed to the chapel. Most seemed friendly, although some looked at me like I was bringing a hex into the congregation, even though I could see a couple of young Irish mammies who had most probably come over previously, finding themselves in the same situation I was in right now. My stomach started cramping during the sermon. Lord, how I inwardly panicked. Luckily, it led to nothing. Heaven knows what was going on. All I knew was my back felt like I had hot irons running up and down it. Father, uh, Father Harris? Ah, Mr. O'Neill. And you must be Molly. I. That's me. We Molly. Is everything all right? I honestly don't know. Maybe. Now? Is it coming now? Hopefully not. It's probably just the baby trying to make room inside you. Come sit. <laughs> Let's talk about your future in our congregation. So, as we know, you've both gotten into a bit of a spot of bother. <laughs> Don't worry. You'll get no judgment from me. These things happen. Mistakes are made. Well, this mistake is currently hurting me really badly. Molly, seriously, if you're in labour... For the love of Christ, Cal! It's not labour. It's too soon. The body does like to have the occasional practice, Mr. O'Neill. It will pass, I'm sure. Sorry for cursing, Father. You're forgiven. So, will you help us out then, Father Harris? Like you mentioned before? Of course. I'll bind you both together before God. Get a ring on your finger, Molly. Try and stop some of that judgement coming your way. Thank you. All that is required is one witness. Will it cost? Only, I, I still don't have employment, and Molly, um... Uh, I won't be taking one shilling. Luckily, the pain led to nothing. And no baby joined us that day. Five days later, we returned to the church. Imogen came as our witness. She has also helped Cahill get his rings. I still have no clue how they went about that, though if I'm honest. The church was dark. Only the candles lightened that big space. Felt very ominous. But as Father Harris began the ceremony, the aminosity turned into one of love. It felt like all the light was shining onto Cahill. My Cahill. I love this man so much. For the first time, I was excited for us. Excited for the baby, for the family we would make together. Since it is your intention to enter into the covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. I, Cahal O'Neill, take you 
Molly O'Connor to be my wife. I promise to be true to you in, in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. I will love you and honour you with all the days of my life. I, Molly O'Connor, take you, Cahill O'Neill, to be my husband. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. I will love you and honour you all the days of my life. Receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. What is this place? Our celebration? Even are they? Not a clue. Just Irish. Irishness. <laughs> hey lad, me and my girl here are celebrating. Give us a jig, will you? Oh, well, you're gonna make me homesick. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. No sad tears. Come on now, happy ones. We are married, Molly. So dance with me. Let me do that first time. Oh yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, I can't be doing that for long. Sorry. <laughs> that was plenty enough. <laughs> Me, Molly. Plenty. Drink? Uh, not for me. You go ahead. I- I'll be right back, okay? No running off. <laughs> Of an angel. The baby is enjoying himself. The music is making him jig around in there. <laughs> oh, hi Irish. <laughs> there. Can I start a song? Oh, don't. You don't know anyone. It's the Irish community of London. I'm sure we'll be welcomed soon enough. Here, here, lads. On the bank of the roses, me love and I sat down. And I took out me fiddle for me play a love of a tune. In the middle of the chin, she smiled and she said, Here, Johnny, lovely Johnny, won't you leave me? Shouldn't we be getting back? Our beds are... Uh, Imogen went on ahead. In fact, uh, she's had to work with someone on our behalf. What are you playing at? Tonight... We will be sharing a bed in Mitre Square. What? Why fur? Well, Susan lives there. You mean poor Susan? We're spending the night in a whore's home? <laughs> Call it Imogen's treat, apparently. Look, we get to share a bed, Molly. We've never done that. <sighs> Well, it would be nice to lay in bed and have a cuddle. Um, it's our wedding night, Mrs. (laughs) O'Neill. Nope. Sorry. (laughs) That's not happening. I've gotten far too big to be doing any of that. I can barely close my dress. I just want to snuggle up. Please, Carol. Nothing more. (sighs) Of course. Only because I love you. <laughs> and then tomorrow I'm I'm going back to them bleeding ducks, alright? I'm sorry this is taking so long, Molly. You will get something. At least we have some money coming. 
and I know it irritates the hell out of you that I'm the one working. But honestly, it's all right. More cheese? Hmm? Oh, please. My body can't be getting enough cheese at the moment. That's one reason I got it. Here. Mm. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though, Molly, we can't be living like this when the wind comes. We need a home. We still have a few months. Everything is starting to work itself out. I'm sure we will have a roof over our heads by March time. March? Yeah. The other night, myself and Imogen tried to work it all out. So what you're saying is, you told Imogen the exact date that we shagged by a waterfall. <laughs> uh, yep, pretty much. So <laughs> 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 you make me yawn too. Go on, let's go find this mitre square, get you some well-deserved rest. Up you get, Mrs O'Neill. Here you. Step the fuck away from my wife. Careful. Mate, I, I, I'm just... I'm not your mate. Come on, Molly. She's done here. And you're not throwing her about no more, all right? She's fucking pregnant, for God's sake. But we need the money. You walk out, you ain't ever coming back here, you hear? I pay good compared to most. Yeah? And you treat these people like cattle. She gets a job anywhere in London, she'd be treated like that. Hate to break it to ya. <coughs> you deserve that. But the money. Here, Molly, it's all right. Let's just, just wipe those tears, eh? I got a job, Molly. I start tomorrow. Oh, well done. <laughs> so, right, come on, you. Let's just. Let's just forget about that, Billy, eh? Go get some proper grub. We've got a bit too skinny for my legging. Well, apart from the baby, he's definitely still growing. <clears throat> baby? Rest. Let me see. Oh, Molly. You might have to get this looked at. Uh, careful. Right, come on. To the Royal London we go. And hold it while we walk, Molly. Support it. Oh, it's broken, isn't it? But let's just wait and see what the doctor says, all right? Perhaps we should start looking for a home. It would be nice to have somewhere to call home for our family. Oh, you've really taken to the idea of us having a family now, haven't you? Oh, it comes in waves. One minute I'm excited, the next I'm shitting myself. Oh, I'm so proud of you. What's the job? Docks. Uh, loading vegetables onto the ships. Married. Looking for our own room. A baby. How very grown up we are. Oh. Support it, Mom. Oh, I am bleeding supporting it! Not like you to be still be here at this time, Moles. Was that your new husband I saw you snuggling up with last night? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't think I've ever seen you smile so much. <laughs> Am I not allowed to be happy? I never said that. It's nice to see. <laughs> now Cattle has a job. Maybe you could buy a dress which doesn't have buttons straining to hold you in. Hmm. Maybe. What did you do to your wrist? Uh, 
I broke it. Ouch. It doesn't hurt too much, now that it's strapped. Why don't you help us with making these boxes? A few extra pennies, eh? Sure. Have my chair. As funny as it is seeing you try and pull yourself off the floor, <laughs> best try and keep you comfortable. Right. So what am I doing? Top, bottom and sides. A little bit of glue on each. Hold each bit together for a few seconds. Then add the next bit. Line it on the sideboard when you're done. Then on to the next one. Simple enough. You popping over to Jack's later, Molly? Yeah, probably. One of the dogs just had puppies. And I can't not be visiting those cute little bundles of fluff. Oh, come on, Imogen. Baby dogs are adorable. You, my girl, are getting soft. Animals have always been my one weakness. Don't suppose you could drop off the in and outers? If you're okay to carry the baskets. You'll need to talk with Mr B and ask him to pop you on the books. Last girl who dropped him off has done a runner. And I've got a job on this evening. Sure. I'd be happy to. Oh, oh Jesus. I've gone and glued me fingers together. Oh, you bloody idiot. Hey, uh... <sighs> Thanks. So, who's your customer? Flaunting your female wilds this evening? I'm not meant to say, but Lady Offman. Oh. She's a regular, and if you ask me, has zero interest in her husband. I still don't understand how this girl with a girl thing even works. Well, I'd be happy to show you. Nah. <laughs> Duh. Not really my thing. Sorry. I mean, I have kissed the girl. Me and my friend back home, Ashlyn, we would... We would practice on one another. <laughs> That's sort of sweet. What's she up to now, Miss Ashlyn? Oh, um... She... she died. Drowned a few days after a win. Molly, I'm sorry. <laughs> Never really got a chance to think about it. It's only just hit me now how much I really miss her. I'm here, if you need to talk. You know, spin stories and things. <laughs> yeah. That might help a little. Thank you. Honestly, Imogen, I don't know where I would be if you hadn't lunched onto me that first day I arrived. Friends forever. You wee Irish bean. <laughs> Lord, I need three hands for this. Need some assistance. Oh, thank you, sir. Ah, Miss O'Connor. Mrs. O'Neill, now, sir. Ah, didn't expect to see you return. Imogen said something about adding me to the book. Looking for a job? Uh, sort of. Maybe. I'm not really sure. I think you're more capable than the in and outers. Let me see your hand. Uh, why do you need to see me hands? Mm, broken your wrist. Uh, yes, but... It's not going to be too much of a bother. Um, I'll ask again. <laughs> uh, why are you eyeing up me fingers? If you'd like a job, Mrs O'Neill, I would suggest you stop asking questions. Uh, but I just needed to be put on the books. <laughs> I don't really need a factory job. But would you like a factory job? Come to my office. Stand on the line. 
We don't normally employ married women, let alone pregnant women, but you, there is something I like about you. So, I am willing to make an exception. How many months do you have? My wife is currently with child. I am hoping for a strong lad this time. Can't be dealing with another girl. Um, I have about two months, I think. Well, I'm sure once you've popped, we can sort you back out with box making until the child is old enough. Sir, honestly, I don't need... I'm also looking for some tenants. They prefer them to be Bryant and May employees. You're offering us a room? It would be shared for now with a woman named Beth. She works the floors. The girls know her as Miss Elizabeth. But I'm looking for other means to house her. Yes, sir. If you please, I I would love a roof and the job. Mm, I knew you were a smart girl. A pretty smart girl. Your hair is gorgeous and you're petite. I like that. Would I start tomorrow? Yes. First thing, then Miss Elizabeth will show you the lodgings. Um, what's the rent, Mr. B? If, if you don't mind me asking. I know that's the sort of thing Cahill will ask. I'm sure we can work something out, don't you? Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, really, sir, thank you. Yes, and how I look forward to that means of payment. Hmm. I've always loved animals. From wee frogs to massive dogs, oh, I love them. To be truthful, if I hadn't slept with cattle before getting married, I reckon we would have run a farm. Right out in the middle of nowhere. Just me, him, some children, and a dirty great big herd of cows. <laughs> with sheep and dogs to round them up. Living a peaceful existence in Ireland. But instead, I would make my way to Jack's. Walking along the smelly Thames to his shack. I did it so much, even after the baby was born. Evening, Molly. Come to see the pups. Oh, I'm gutted I couldn't stay yesterday. Ah, through here. She ended up having three. Ooh, oh, they're so sweet. Look, can I hold one? Please? Yeah, just be gentle. Oh, hello. Oh, they're so soft. Oh, no, no, it's okay. Oh, you're okay, I won't hurt you. A natural. <laughs> well, I've always been told that. Oh, I'm so cute. I reckon you're going to be a good mother, Molly. <laughs> oh, don't. I'm trying my best not to think about all of that at the moment. Yeah, but you will, though. I know you're young, but as you Irish would say, if God intended. No. <laughs> Most Irish would say, keep your legs together before you get married. <laughs> Do you regret it, the baby? I don't feel like I can comment on that till he's made an appearance. Oh, so you reckon it's a boy? I just have this weird feeling that he is. Charlie. We Charlie O'Neill. I never said a name. We had never even spoken about it. It came to be there and then. His name, the baby's name. Luckily, Cahill liked it. <laughs> ah, speaking of Cahill, for some reason while working on the docks before, 
he had ended up with the name Harold. And somehow, once again, that was his work name. But slowly, people started calling him off the docks. And Cahill O'Neill drifted into the gutters. And everyone knew him as Harold. Seriously, can't believe they put you on cutting. Lucky sod. I didn't really get the cheese. I've been on those dippers for years. Want to move upstairs to the fillers. Rain on me breath. That white residue that gets all over your clothes and food and things. Maybe you should hold your breath. Oh, for goodness sake. You'll be moved when you start behaving, Susan. Not before. Oh, crap. Forgot she was here. Molly. How was your first day? Oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> oh, give me a squinch. Right, I'll leave you lovebirds to it. See you tomorrow, Molly. All right, bye. This way. Just a reminder, I'm only living with you for a few weeks. Don't be thinking I'll be looking after no baby. Oh, no, Miss Elizabeth, no, of course not. Here we are. Come on then, in. Well, this is not far from the factory. Hmm. Do not touch anything of mine. Do you hear me? Yes, Miss, Miss Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Enter. Mrs. O'Neill, still struggling to fit into the dress, I see. Here, I can't have my girls looking untidy. A, a dress, sir? It was my wife's, but now it is yours. Please take it. It will fit your changing form so much better, I'm sure. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not a charity case. No, but we can't have you growing out of your clothes, can we? Um, I guess not. Thank you, Mr. B. Well, put it on then. What? No? Yes. But... Yes, sir. Mm. Good girl. But, uh, sir, could, could you at least turn your back? No. Do you want this job? You want the room, yes? Yes, but I... I don't... Undress. <laughs> Sir, please don't... Undress, please. See? Was that so hard? Hmm. Yes. I'm going to lock the door. Then we can sort out our little arrangement. That was the first time, the first time of many. That was the payment he had spoken about. He charged us no rent. And Cahill thought Mr. B was just a good man. But I was paying for the roof with my body. My body forced under his, shoved into the desk and and that, how beautiful you are. You are more beautiful in anger than in repose. I don't ask you for your love. Give me yourself and your hatred. Give me yourself and that pretty rage. Give me yourself and that enchanting scorn. It will be enough for me. Sorry, it doesn't really baby friendly, is it, to me, one? You. That is my book. I told you not to touch my property. It's, it's not like I was doing any harm. You're moving out today, anyway. Rules still apply. Oh, this is why you ended up on the binders, you know. Oh. What? Because of the cheese? 
I was hungry. I'm, I'm pregnant. Oh, you're pregnant. Oh, 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 give me the book. Oh, well, laddy fucking da. Look at you reading the mystery of Edwin Drood. Oh, aren't you so educated? You are a toff. Thrown out of that society. Welcome to the gutter, girl. I will see you at the factory. She has to be one of the realest women I have ever met. I hadn't heard from Imogen in a while. I'd not seen her since the first day we had sat and made matchboxes together. We had sat through a boring mass. My energy was so low, I would nearly fell asleep. Until it came to pray. Today we remember those we have lost. News of Imogen Dean's death has shocked us all. But we thank the Lord in all his ways that we... Imogen was shot. While with her client. The husband had come home and point black shot her through the face. That's why it took so long for us to find out. They couldn't identify the body. How could God take such a sweet lady? She didn't deserve that. She was making women happy in their own bodies. I miss her. I miss them all. I will always remember her as Cahill described her. A flyer amongst the mud. The next morning, as I woke up to an empty room, I felt uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. My stomach felt like it was touching my knees and every joint hurt. As I waddled to the factory, it just got worse. It wasn't cramping like I was getting with the false labour. My body felt like everything was shifting, moulding into a different shape. And it made me really sick. <coughs> You alright, love? Yeah. Just fed really off. Let me look at you. You're all flushed. You ate something bad? No. I don't. <clears throat> <sighs> Molly, your bump just sank lower. Susan. <laughs> I'm starting to think I don't have two months at all. You're cramping? I wasn't. I just got one just then. Like my stomach was in a vice. Are you right to work? Aye. Uh, these things take a while, right? And I can't lose that money. Inside, girls. Now. Why have I been left on these bloody binders again? Mr. B said... <clears throat> Keep it down, Molly. <sighs> Lord, that was a big one. <clears throat> well, how long's left? Oh, God. Four hours. <sighs> oh, stop it, you. You can't come now. You'll have to hold off. At least till I'm home. All right? Please do that for Mammy. Oh, for goodness sake. Mrs. O'Neill, what's the commotion? Oh, uh, sorry, Miss Elizabeth. I'm just humming to myself. Yeah? Well, don't. Molly. Hmm? Oh, I'm grand. <laughs> don't you worry. I'm sure you have clients to deal with. Oh, you don't want to be worrying about little old me. <laughs> so it wasn't labour? Nah. 
<laughs> oh, good. Yeah, I have a busy night, and if you're sure, you see, I best be going. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. S <sighs> oh, thank God I haven't got fortune. <laughs> Oh, no, Lord, no. Oh, oh not here. <laughs> At least let me... Oh. 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 oh, what do I do? Oh. 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 Alleyway, out of the way. Oh, because there's no way I'm making... Oh. Oh, 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 breathe, Molly. Oh, breathe. Oh, 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 come on. Oh, oh, Lord, I can't. Oh, I can't do this. Oh, oh, not again. Oh, 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 sweet mother of Mary. Oh, was there any need to make it so painful, Lord? What did women ever do to you? Oh. 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 I want me, mommy. Oh. Oh. I can't do this. Oh. 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 Day. <laughs> oh, no, I feel like I'm gonna fall off. Some of that low G. Uh, Molly? Evening. Evening. Oh. Did you? Yeah. In the picnic basket? I didn't know where else to put him. Him? Come and meet your son. Oh Lord, Molly, just, just, just look at him. <coughs> Why didn't you send word? It happened really quickly. Down the alley opposite the factory. Kala, it hurt so much. Oh, but you did it. Tom, come here, you. Go on, you get some rest. I just pushed a human out of me. Is it any wonder I look knackered? Uh, would you... <laughs> Looks like I need to feed him again before I sleep. I honestly have no clue what I'm doing. Well, you seem to have breastfeeding time. You're a natural. It's all guesswork. Plus, Charlie is only two hours old. Plenty of time to make mistakes. And we'll learn together, Mrs. O'Neill. Molly. 
That's it. Mm. You rest. Mm. Come here, Charlie. Mm. Let's let your mommy nap, eh? My son. Mm. Hello, Charlie. Mm. We're gonna have some fun, you and I. Father and son. Mommy, so wee. Eyes the colour of a stormy sky. Yeah. I pray to God we have lots and lots of little mollies running around. Our family. <laughs> One way to celebrate the birth of a child. Yeah. Whiskey. Yeah. Well, I definitely drank my share. <laughs> Your son has been kicking up a fuss for four hours. Four bloody hours, Cal. Harold, whatever your hell you're calling yourself now. Uh, well, what have you said him? I'm trying everything. <laughs> what? Mother's room? Molly, don't be drinking that stuff. Oh, mad cooked up in here. Charlie won't stop crying. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. But you swan off to work. Bugger off to the Red Tavern, leaving me with the wind. But that's how things work. The woman stays at home and looks after the children. It's children! Children! Well, I can't handle one child, let alone children. Would you just shut up? Molly, you shouting at him won't help, will it? Oh, what do you know? The man who always sees the positives. Oh, come here, Charlie. See your crime on. You're upsetting your mummy. Oh, I don't want this. I want to go home to Ireland. I hate London. I hate being in this stinking room. I hate having no friends. You have Susan. And what about Mr B? He's your friend. Well, he must be. He lets us lodge here for free. Oh, I can't do this anymore. Molly, you... No, you can't just leave. What about the baby? I'm, I'm going out to try and calm down, okay? Before I end up doing something drastic. Molly! Once again, ready to jump. We, Molly O'Neill, the failure. God, why? Seriously, why do you just always shit on me? No baby to kick me inside this time. Just me and my thoughts. Never good to be alone with those. You can't even mother her, Molly. You're useless. All I've done is wreck Cahill's future. He could have gone far in Belfast. Manager, even. I never thought I'd miss being lectured by Mammy. She was a good Mammy. Her intentions were pure. Even if I healed it at the time. Everyone is best off without me. Well, that's not true. <laughs> Mr. B. Why are you sitting on the edge of the bridge, Molly? You have a baby to look after. A responsibility. I, I can't. You can. Every new mother goes through this judgment. It's not worth jumping. It won't fix any problems you've already created. Created? You're the one who slept with the lad, so it's your responsibility. I... If you're worried about the future, I have a proposition to offer. But you need to get down from the bridge. 
I don't want to owe you any more payments, sir. But why not? It's fun at times. You can't deny that. Off the edge, Mrs. O'Neill. Come on. You've been drinking. Unsteady on your feet, I see. What's this proposition? You get back on the in and outers book. Then, when the child is old enough, you return to the factory. And the boy, he will have employment once he's left school. You're giving us both jobs. Why? Because I like you, Molly. And I'm sure I will like you even more now we have no bump to work around. Just remembering you squirming under me last time. You can't deny you enjoyed it. You screamed so loudly. Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Uh, do you honestly think you would be surviving in London if it wasn't for me? I gave you a room. I gave you a future, a job. And as for your fella, do you really think his job on the docks just happened? You got him that job. But we barely knew one another. Imogen, the next day at the drop-off, she told me all about the pretty Irish girl with the red hair. Mm. The smoke seems to be getting rather thick. And I'm due payment. Here? Sir? No, please, please not here. But it makes it more thrilling, don't you think? You do this for me, and I will let you rest for a bit before collecting again. Sir? Don't... Oh. My hands seem to be making their way up your skirt. Please stop. A future. A job. A home. Try not to moan too loudly, Mrs. O'Neill. Molly, I've come with your box of making things. Just pop them on the table. It's just gone off. How about I make us both a nice pot of tea? You got any leaves? Yeah. There should be some in the tin. Be sparing, though. Still using the basket, then? Susan! Ages to get wee Charlie to sleep. Please, for the love of the Almighty, please don't wake him. Sorry. I'll make the pot, you rest for a bit. I still can't get over how small he is. His fingernails are so tiny. Well, he wasn't going to come out massive, was he? Otherwise he wouldn't have fitted in you. I still think he came about two months too soon. He's grown since I was last in. You know what people do? You could do it when he's too big for the basket. That is, pop him in a drawer, pull it out, put it on the floor, one baby bed. Hmm. I will be sure to remember that one. Oh, thank you. How's the factory? Nothing new. Same routine. Suppose I best start on these boxes. You sound fed up. I'm bored. Just not used to all this. Sat in this room staring at... my son. I'm thinking of writing to my mammy, you know. Really? Even after what you told me? Well, I feel like she would like to know. She always loved children. Molly, 
I think you're starting to live in false hope. I just miss her. Even if she is a okay. cave. You've had too much time to think. We need to get out of here. <laughs> to do what? I have Charlie. The best I can do is sit at a table and make 2,000 boxes a day. You're educated, right? I mean, you can read and write and all that. Well, yes. How about teaching? Volunteering to teach the poor? Wait, can you do that? Yeah, there's these ragged schools popping up everywhere. Hmm. I wonder if they would let me bring Charlie. Doesn't hurt to ask. It will be that one thing you have sorted yourself. No Mr B involved. Well, I've well and truly trapped myself there. Bound to the matchers. You young Molly. We all make mistakes when we are young. <laughs> yes, we do. Mistakes I need to learn from. Oh, Mrs O'Neill. It's good to see you. I see you brought Charlie again today. Oh, don't worry. We can make it work. Plus, all the women here love him. Why? He's got him big. Hello, Charlie. <laughs> he won't be able to fit in the picnic basket soon. Oh, you'll have to balance him on the hip like the rest of us mothers. <laughs> so, where would you like me today? Uh, how about the two boys over there? Oh, my. They're in a right state. Ah, uh, we don't be judging any people in here, Molly. Oh, I know. I'm barely any higher in the pecking order than them. <laughs> Which doesn't affect you in any way. You are educated, <laughs> and using that education to help others. For once, I feel like I'm doing something good. That yeah, you are. <sighs> are you sure you want to go back to that dreadful factory after this? I need the money. So you're still making them boxes for Mr B then? Yes, I'm still working for Mr B. <laughs> I volunteered at that ragged school for three years. Then, Charlie went into education. I returned to the factory, back cutting matchsticks to size. No more children blessed me in Cahill, even though he tried. The arrangement with Mr. B carried on. Once every two weeks was the agreement, but sometimes he would just decide he wanted me there and then. I couldn't do anything about that. I kept safe. It wasn't until 10 years later I messed up. But that's another story. Not mine. That story belonged to Jen and her tales before Vastra. Dear Mammy, I'm writing to tell you where I went. Even if you don't get far into reading this, at least you know I'm still alive. Not dead in a ditch somewhere between Port Stewart and Belfast. We're in London now. Bo. We married not long after we arrived. It was nothing like the weddings we ever attended, but it got the job done. I had a baby, a little boy named Charlie. Oh, he's such a cute wean. He's coming up to two months old. To be truthful, Mammy, I miss you. Sometimes when Charlie won't settle, I, I long for your help. And yes, I know all of this is punishment for me. But surely I'm still allowed to miss you, right? Don't feel you need to write back. I'm fine. All grown up and living in London. With a husband, Wayne, and a job. So much love. Molly. You've been listening to Molly 2, Band to the Matches. Brought to you by TT Productions.
Molly was voiced by Chelsea Lagan. Cattle, Brendan McCaffrey. Mr. B, Matt Barrett. Imogen, Vanessa McCauley. Billy, James Wall. Miss Elizabeth, Grace Beard. Susan, Kelly Coyle. Noah, Connor Chadwick. Father Harris, Ian Harris. Jack, Mart Ian Ian. Mrs. Finch, Abby Louise. Jim, Zach Rosenfeld. It was directed and audio edited by Abby Louise. With music by James York. <laughs>